talk is by Oscar Guadalupe Fernandez Clarendon. Oh, please introduce yourself. Uh, well, uh, Oscar is not here. I'm going to present in his stead. Okay. Let me. Okay. So. What's your name? Well, hello. Uh, my name is uh, Gustavo Palacios. Uh, I'm well uh, representing uh, Oscar and the rest of the team uh, with uh, this uh, paper uh, titled uh, "Bio-Inspired Task Rule Retrieval Model with Auditory Sorting Test." Um, so, well, let, let, let's begin. Uh, we will be uh, covering these uh, four uh, points uh, very, very briefly. And at the end, well, if you have uh, questions or comments, uh, they are very much welcome. So, uh, first of all, um, well, we are defining a, a rule retrieval model. So, what is a rule? Or, so, uh, rules are a kind of conditioning uh, given to certain stimulus. Uh, and they serve the purpose of determining what kind of action is appropriate for each of uh, the perceived stimulus. Uh, the main objective of uh, our uh, research is um, to build a rules recovery model, uh, as well as studying the characteristics uh, both of our uh, system and all the connected uh, systems that, that is uh, other cognitive uh, functions uh, related to the rules for tribery, uh, such as a memory, uh, that would allow for a human-like behavior in an agent. Uh, so uh, our proposal uh, first, uh, well, it, it begins with uh, this uh, diagram, uh, which details uh, the connections between uh, brain areas related to the retrieval of rules, uh, which are shown in green. And uh, another relevant areas, uh, such as the uh, purple areas, which are related to perception, and the orange uh, areas related to action. Over here, uh, both the purple and orange, uh, although they are really important, are not covered in detail in, in this, this uh, paper. Uh, they, however, play an, an important role. And uh, well, once we've uh, figured uh, all the connections and all the areas related to uh, the retrieval of rules, we then uh, created or designed this uh, flow uh, diagram, this flow model, which details uh, what is going to happen and when is going to happen. So first uh, uh, we have, uh, well, the, the first process, calculates uh, the reward value of each rule retrieved in a previous cycle, if there is one. And this process helps uh, generate, to generate an array of predictive information that will be used further on. Uh, we then uh, take from uh, the LPFC an ID of the type of action plan that will be executed. Uh, for this specific task. Um, uh, we then obtain uh, the rules uh, according to the plan established by the, process, the previous process, process two. Um, process four uh, obtains uh, all the information regarding sound localization and sound pitch from the auditory cortex uh, at least in the scope of this investigation, we focused on auditory cues instead of visual ones. Uh, all, all this information, uh, the rules, the, the retrieved rules and the auditory information then is uh, filtered in plus five, um, leaving only the rules relevant to the task at hand. 
Uh, process six retrieves a priority value uh, from historic rewards. That is, uh, it uh, checks whether these rules have been applied for, and if so, which are their priority values uh, in order to uh, will be able to evaluate uh, later on. Uh, process seven uh, combines uh, what we call priority value A and V, which are retrieved from previous processes, processes and combines them to uh, create a new value. Uh, using this information, process eight um, selects the rule that has the best or the highest priority value and selects it so that process nine attaches this selected rule to the plan. Uh, lastly, well, um, we process the feedback received, that is uh, confirmation if the rule was correct or incorrect, and modify the uh, priority values of the rule that was selected so that uh, the process can begin again. So th this, is, this is the cycle. So, uh, well, in, in order to test this, uh, we created a case study uh, with auditory cues. We asked first a group of humans to participate in order to be able to compare their results with uh, our model's uh, results. So, uh, how does this auditory sorting test work? Uh, well, we present each participant with a sound that can either have a low pitch or a high pitch. And uh, that can also come from either uh, the left or the right side of their headphones. Uh, each participant has then uh, 10 seconds to try to sort the test, the, uh, I mean, sort the sound by pressing either a button A or B. Uh, the, so they try to sort uh, the sound on if lungs, let's say on the right or, or on the left. Um, and after that, the participant receives a feedback. Uh, if the answer was wrong, the uh, feedback will be a buzzer. And if it was right, they will receive a time. So uh, this process is repeat, uh, repeated. Uh, 10 times uh, with, let's say, the same rule uh, before changing the, the sorting rule on, on the software. And uh, the participant has to find the rule which uh, would allow them to uh, sort correctly the auditory cues. And they sort a total of 60 uh, sounds. And then uh, the experiment concludes. Uh, we uh, save uh, the time, the answer set us uh, which button they pressed and if they made some mistakes on the sorting and what kind of mistake it was in, in order to compare them. So after we have all this uh, information, we compare uh, the results first uh, amongst themselves. I mean, uh, person one has all their um, results compared uh, just with person one just to see what kind of uh, mistakes they made. And uh, uh, this way we created a matrix, a similarity matrix uh, for each participant. On this matrix, a yellow color means that uh, the results are very similar between them. A blue color would mean uh, a lot of difference. And uh, we created these matrices uh, for each of the participants in order to compare between humans. And uh, that resulted in this matrix over here. And well, we can see uh, due to the yellowish color of this matrix that uh, although uh, each human will answer uh, according to their own way of sorting and each one of them reacted uh, differently to uh, the feedback, well, uh, the results were very similar between humans. Th that's, uh, that, that explains the yellow color. So, well, uh, once we have the humans, well, it's time to test our model against those humans. Uh, so in order to do this, um, we created 12 different configurations for our model, uh, modifying three parameters and combining all these uh, different ways of uh, setting these parameters. Uh, memory, 
which would allow the model to forget previous information or remember high valued rewards. Uh, we modify the integration of imp information, which determines how important recent information is versus how important uh, the historic of rewards is. And lastly, the reward system, uh, which decides if making mistakes should be punished or not. The idea of doing these 12 different configurations is being able to compare each one of them with humans and see which one uh, was more human-like. So, well, um, we created all of the 12 models and we ran some tests. We asked the models to sort the same cues the humans did and uh, compare the results of each individual of those uh, 12 uh, configurations with uh, humans, resulting in a, a very interesting matrix. Um, now in this matrix, uh, which just has right here, the results from the uh, model, the, the 12 configurations working appended, um, well, we, we can see, uh, well, they, they are ordered so that we can uh, find easily which uh, of the 12 iterations corresponds to which column. And well, we can see that these models are not as yellow as the humans. Um, but nevertheless, we found uh, four um, configurations that showed a promise because of their high similarity to humans compared to the, to, to the rest of them, to their eight. Um, these uh, four configurations show a, a bit of more yellowish color, which means they are close, uh, closer to uh, uh, the humans. Uh, so we picked these four and we asked these configurations to go over the experiment again several more times just to get more data and be able to statistically see which one was really better. And we got uh, the results that we, we see on this table. And well, the, there is a promise. We have a uh, very high performance. That is, uh, there are uh, configurations that look very similar to humans, somewhat similar. And uh, well, the, although one of them has a bit uh, high variance compared to, to the others. So what we can uh, conclude from this, uh, well, based on the information we, we obtain, we, we can conclude that uh, the best results, that is uh, the model was more human-like when we integrated the information with equal uh, weight, that is, uh, previous information and new information uh, have the same value. Uh, not not one is more important than other. And uh, well, also considering just the peak of the rewards. And the uh, second is uh, when a system is somewhat forgetful, uh, there is not enough memory, and you have to, uh, you know, forget. The, the old destination, um, which you can achieve a more human-like behavior if uh, you do not punish wrong answers. So, well, that, that helps uh, a bit. And uh, although we do not have the highest performance, uh, we, we do not have a 80% similarity to humans, we are working on the other uh, cognitive functions that would allow to this performance to go higher. And uh, well, uh, having said that, um, that would be all from me. Uh, thank you much for listening. And well, if you have any questions or um, comments. Great, um, thank you very uh, much. Yeah, yes. Please go ahead with questions. Uh, I have a question. Uh, have you considered uh, in, in this uh, sound model that you're using something like a, uh, a moving sound and, and, and see uh, how, how, uh, how, how it's going to be perceived? So something like those uh, old stereo, uh, uh, stereoscopic kind of, of uh, uh, effects. Yeah, uh, actually, well, uh, that would be pretty uh, interesting to see. 
And although we considered at first uh, to use uh, more complex sounds, uh, including maybe sounds that, that could uh, move, uh, well, at first we decided to try to keep it simple uh, because, well, the more complex the sound, the more difficult it would be to, to gather information from humans specifically. Uh, we are a bit difficult to analyze. <laughs> okay. Oh, it, it was just a curiosity. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Other questions, please. 